Hi there, uh, my name's Elliot, I'm the product manager of App Studio, and today we're at the Publishing Media Expo in Earl's Court. And I'm just going to show you a quick run through of App Studio and how you can publish content um, to a digital edition and get it based on an iPad or an Android tablet or even a desktop browser. I'll start by showing you an app so you can see some of the interactive features. Can you see that? So this is an example of Good Food magazine. And you'll see here, here's their cover page. And bit by bit, it slowly loads up. And their animations bring in different parts of text bit by bit until the, finally the animation is complete and you can see the cover. I can then swipe on and get to a page here and I can press a link and actually go into an article. From here, one of the interactivities we offer is to flip a page over. So I press the page flip button, it turns it over and we reveal more so we can see the ingredients and the steps. Now one of the things to note with these apps is text on the page is actually real text. So if I highlight one of these words, in this case I've highlighted chicken, um, I can actually actually copy that text and then choose to obviously use it in an email program or something else to, to talk to someone. So maybe I'd, I'd highlight a couple of words and, and send them a snippet. The other thing I might do is actually search the issue based on that text. So if I want to search for chicken, I just press the search button and suddenly in this current issue I found all these results. But since I have other issues as well downloaded, if I go to the All Issues tab and go down, you'll start to see that I get results from December as well. So I get results from all the different issues I've got on my iPad. And that's all possible because text is text and not done as a flat image. Another thing you can do because it's text is there's all these ingredients down the side. So Good Food have decided to customize their app. Um, what they've done is they've got the shopping list button. So if I press the shopping list button now, it's extracted all that text down the side and added it to the shopping list, which I could choose to email to myself later and take around the supermarket. I can then move on to another page and continue to go through the content where you'll see there's a similar format of page because it's lots of recipe cards where you turn it over and get more content. So let me show you something where there's a, a bit more interactivity as well. So this is the Stuff iPad app, and here again you'll see it's very common for people to put animations on their cover pages to slowly build up information. As I, as I scroll through, I can um, get to some more interactivity. So I can press this button here to reveal more information. I can scroll vertically as well as horizontally to carry on going through content if that's how I design it as a designer. And then I can carry on going through and change this bit of text down here based on buttons I press. I can also, where I've got this limited amount of space where I didn't want to design a really tall page, I can scroll this box here to get more information. And then finally, if I go back to the Good Food app, you'll see here there's good ways to navigate the content. So I can pull up um, down the bottom, I can pull up all the pages here, scroll through, find the page I want and tap on it. And then I'm taken to the page. I can also choose to use the share button to share it by email. I could also use Twitter and Facebook if I wanted. And I can use bookmarking, so I can add a bookmark and then access it later and come back to this page. And finally, if I go back to the issues screen, I can see all the issues I've published within this app and each app can be charged for individually and I can also have subscriptions down the side for three months, six months, 12 months subscription. And here's a list of all the issues I've got. The ones I've previously bought, I've got download and I've archived them off to help save space on my iPad. So next I'll show you how to use the publishing portal and how to actually manage your content. So if I continue showing the good food content, um, you'll see here I've got a list of all the issues inside the publishing portal. So when I want to create a new issue, I simply create a place folder it here, I press the create button, and what that gives me is a place to set the title, uh, the date of the issue, and also other metadata I want to save, like description and maybe a purchasing ID. 
so therefore I could charge through uh, Apple subscriptions. Once I go into the issue, when I first create it, I'll obviously have no content in there. But then what I can do is I can choose to upload content using tools like either Quark Express or Adobe InDesign. And so with both tools um, in Quark Express, we have an HTML5 palette, which lets you add all the interactivity, and then a separate App Studio publishing palette to then publish to the correct issue you want to go to. In InDesign, we use the native um, interactivity palettes and then let you install an additional extension to do the upload into the cloud. So when a new item comes in, it will appear at the bottom of the list. And then what that does is a, a new item will appear and it will start to convert, in the case of InDesign, convert the InDesign format over to HTML5, which is actually the end product for our content that goes into the app. And we use HTML5 so that we can go cross-platform to Android tablets, phones, iPads. And actually, I'll show you in a minute the desktop reader. And on a desktop reader, you can actually see your content on any web browser so that you can get to the people of all um, devices. So once it's compiled, you can then choose to drag and drop files around. So in this case, um, I won't move it because it's their live content, but I'll show you if I drag this file here, I could then drop it there to reorder. So I could you know, add my cover page last and drag it right to the beginning. So I'll just leave that where that was. So once you've made your content, you obviously want to test it and see it on the device. So what you can do next, if you can press this test button. Pressing the test button creates a a bundle that the app can read and uploads it to the testing server. And then all you need to do is on your iPad, using the App Studio Issue Preview app, you can select your publication, in this case it would be Good Food, and then select the issue you've created that you want to download. And then uh, it gives you the full experience like you're using the end user app, except for it's just going to you and, your pub and everybody else on your team and no one else. So you can go through, you can try out all your animations and your pop-ups, etc., and try it out there. And then finally, when you're ready to publish, we come back here to our list of issues. Um, you can see here the issue they're working on has a green publish button. Once you press the publish button, it does the same as going to test, except for instead it goes to the live environment where your customers can download in their app. And if your app is newsstand enabled, it will send a push notification and go to your uh, readers and it will auto download. So that's the content creation part of it. The other part is building an app itself. And instead of using Xcode and having to get dirty with the code, we supply this form here. So if you go to the app manager tab and then the build option, you've got a series of fields to fill out. Some information comes directly from iTunes Connect. Some is images that you create for your splash screen and icon. Uh, some more items come from Apple, if we're going to iPad and iPhone, where you need to get your profiles and certificates. This is all documented on Apple's website. And you simply upload them to our form, fill in the configuration options you want, decide if you want it to be newsstand or if you want to have subscriptions, and then you save your changes and hit submit. Uh, once you hit submit, you get an email and on your email, you can download a test version of the app to check it's what you, you want. And another link in the email is a link you then submit to Apple. Or if it's in the case of the Google Play Store, you'd have an APK file you can send to Google Play. And then from there, you wait for the approval process. So with Apple, that's generally one to two weeks. And once they've approved your app, you publish the content you want using this portal. You don't have to go through Apple other than creating in-app purchases for each issue. So the final thing I'd like to show you is just our desktop reader, which is kind of pre-release right now. So this is using the stuff content in a web browser. So they've designed this for iPad, but it still works in a web browser and all the interactivity works as you'd expect. So I can either click next to the page to move on, click the arrow to move to the next page, or press the right key to move to the next page. I can then press one of these page links by clicking on it. And as you can see, it's taking me to the page. I can use the interactivity like page flip and it turns it over. All works in the web browser. I can press these buttons here to change the information down there. Move across to the next page and, and scroll that same column up and down that you saw earlier. If I hover to the right, I've now got this toolbar up here. 
where I can return to my store page to see my list of all my issues. I could share it on Facebook or Twitter. And what that will do is that will share the link to that exact page so then other people can come in and go to that page. Um, there's a help overlay. So at any point I can go back and find out information about all the different items. And you'll see here, here's a help about our film strip to see all the pages, which was a similar experience you saw in the app. So if we close this, I can then hover over, see the pages, click on it, and get taken to the page I want. And hopefully we'll have that ready in the next month or two. And that's a very quick introduction to App Studio. I hope you found that useful. See you soon.